Lesson 2-4. In this lesson, we're going to prove our first geometric theorems. Our goal in geometry, as in all of mathematics, is to assume as few things as possible and prove as much as we can from them. Our assumptions are things that we've looked at, postulates such as the segment addition postulate and others that we saw in Unit 1. Our reasoning is going to be solely based on those postulates and the definitions that we've seen. In essence, a theorem is a fact. It's a statement that we can prove to be true. Typically, a theorem is or can be stated as a conditional statement. This is why we've spent so much time studying conditional statements and will continue to do so. One of our major goals in this lesson is to prove the vertical angles theorem. It states that if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent to each other. In this case, the hypothesis is two angles are vertical angles. This represents our starting point, our given information. Here are a pair of vertical angles. We'll use this as given information, as a reference for our proof. What we're going to try to prove is the conclusion of this theorem. These angles are congruent to each other. Before we begin the actual proof, we want to take an informal look at the situation and see if we can work out generally why this must be true. What do you see in the diagram that might be helpful? Here's what I see. These two angles form a straight angle when combined, and so that is 180 degrees. These two angles also form a straight angle. That's 180 degrees as well. In both of these linear pairs, we make use of this angle. If these two angles add to 180 degrees, and these two angles add to 180 degrees, doesn't it follow that the two vertical angles should be the same measure? That reasoning is going to be the basis of our proof. This is a good plan, but the details are very shaky right now. For example, all we're given is that we have vertical angles. If I want to make use of the fact that we, we have linear pairs and angles add up to 180 degrees, that's not part of a given. Furthermore, if we look at the definition of vertical angles, hmm, now where could I find the definition of vertical angles? Here it is. Two angles are vertical if and only if their sides form intersecting lines. That doesn't say anything about linear pairs. So we're missing pieces. To fill in those missing pieces, I've put together some helper theorems. They're a little bit easier, and they're going to give us tools that we need in order to prove the vertical angle theorem. The first helper theorem is going to be that vertical angles form linear pairs. This is a fairly challenging theorem to prove as a first theorem. We've included this at the back of this set of notes. Uh, students who wish to pursue this are recommended to look that over after we've gone through some easier proofs. The first proof we're actually going to walk through is called the linear pair theorem. We'll use the fact that we have linear pairs and show that the angles must be supplementary. Our hypothesis becomes our given. We will start with a set of angles that form a linear pair. Our conclusion is what we hope to prove. In any proof, we typically want to start with our given information. Our first statement will be that the angles form a linear pair, because that's given. Our first question is how can we use this information? Maybe we can look at exactly what a linear pair is. We need to be careful to stay on solid logical footing. And so we need to look up the exact definition of linear pair. 
Now, where could we go to find it? Once again, we can refer to the vocabulary in Unit 1. A linear pair is a pair of angles that are adjacent and that form a straight angle. Since we want to talk about the angle measures, the most important part of this for us right now is that it's a straight angle. That gives us our second statement. Angle ACB is a straight angle by the definition of linear pair. So how does that help us? Maybe we should look up what a straight angle is. A straight angle is an angle whose sides are opposite rays. Hmm, not very helpful. However, there is a note that a straight angle's measure is exactly 180. Can we use that as part of our proof? No, that is not the definition. So where does this information come from? Right after the vocabulary chart is a list of postulates and theorems. Going to that list, we find the protractor postulate. The important thing here is that this tells us that angle measures range from 0 to 180. Since a straight angle is our largest angle, it's 180 degrees. Returning to our proof, we can say that the measure of angle ACB is 180 degrees by the protractor postulate. The next thing we want to do is to be able to say that angle 1 and angle 2 have measures that add to 180 degrees. So, how do we deal with adding angles together? Once again, we return to the Unit 1 guide and look at the list of postulates. The angle addition postulate says that part plus part equals whole, informally. We can use that to set up an equation. The angle addition postulate says that we can add two angles that are adjacent and get the measure of the whole angle. Now we just need to say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is 180 degrees because the measure of angle ACB is 180 degrees. To do that, we use the substitution property. These two things are interchangeable. And so we're going to use that to change the measure of angle ACB to 180 degrees. This is the substitution property of equality. So, is that enough to say that the angles are supplementary? Let's take a look. There it is. Two angles are supplementary if and only if the sum of their angle measures is 180 degrees. We just showed that the sum of these angle measures is 180 degrees. And so we can end our proof by saying angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary by the definition. We can tell that we're done with the proof when we've reached a statement that matches what we were trying to prove, the conclusion of the original conditional statement. Let's go back and take another look at our plan. We have showed that vertical angles form linear pairs, and we just proved that linear pairs are supplementary. If only we knew that two angles that are supplementary to the same angle were themselves congruent, then we'd be done. We could prove the vertical angles theorem. This is the congruent supplements theorem. If two angles are both supplementary to the same angle, then those two angles are congruent. Pause the video for a moment and see if you can draw a sketch that represents this given situation. Here's the one I came up with. Yours doesn't have to be identical, but it does have to have angle 1 and angle 2 supplementary, and angle 3 and angle 2 supplementary. Once again, we begin our proof by restating the given information. If there's more than one line that has the same reason, you may combine them into the same step. We just looked up the definition of supplementary, so we can use that right off the bat. The sum of the angles is 180 
by the definition of supplementary. Because both sums are equal to 180, the sums must be equal to each other. That is another example of using the substitution property of equality. Notice that the measure of angle 2 is on both sides of the equation. This is where we can draw on our algebra skills and subtract it from both sides, leaving us with measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 3. We're almost done. We've said that their measures are equal, but that's not the same as saying that the angles are congruent. But that's easily fixed. The definition of congruent angles says that angles are congruent if and only if their measures are equal. So by definition, angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. We've now proven the congruent supplements theorem. We can now take on the vertical angles theorem. First, let's come up with an appropriate given. Our hypothesis was that two angles are vertical angles. So we're going to use that as our given. Only we're actually going to name these angles with angles from the diagram. The statement we're trying to prove is going to be the conclusion. Now we can start the proof. Our first statement is going to state the given. We've already looked at the definition of vertig vertical angles, and we realized that it's not going to help us that much. So, we'll go back to one of our helper theorems. Our first one was vertical angles form linear pairs. If we have vertical angles, then we have linear pairs. We're ultimately going to rely on the fact that angle 1 and angle 3 are both supplementary to angle 2. And so those are the linear pairs we're interested in showing. Our reason is that theorem. Any theorem we prove becomes a valid reason that we can use later. The next helper theorem we looked at addressed linear pairs. The linear pair theorem stated, if two angles form a linear pair, the angles are supplementary. We have angles that formed linear pairs, and so we can now say they're supplementary. Now we've shown that two angles are supplementary to the same angle. This is precisely the hypothesis of the congruent supplements theorem that we just proved. We can now conclude that those two angles are congruent. We've now shown that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, which is exactly what we were trying to prove. We have now proven that vertical angles are congruent. It is a centuries-old tradition to write the letters QED at the end of a particularly important proof. The last theorem in this video is one that I leave for you to try. This is called the right angle theorem. It will be helpful to be able to say that right angles are congruent. The first thing we're going to do is rewrite this as a conditional statement. Here's a good restatement of the right angle theorem as a conditional. Now, I want you to pause the video and draw a sketch, figure out what to write as the given and to prove lines, and then try to prove it. Remember to use those definitions, go back to the unit one guide if you need to, and see if you can come up with some good steps. Remember, there are multiple correct ways of doing this. Good luck. Here's my answer. Take a minute to read through it and compare it to yours. If you have any questions, we can talk about it in class. The remaining proofs in this section will be completed in class.